Welcome back to the morning show here on Arise News. I'm Biola Labi. And I'm Tundra Biola. Senator Anthony Adifuye is a third Republic senator that represented Lagos West District in the National Assembly on the platform of Social Democratic Party. A long-standing progressive politician and traditional chief of Lagos royalty, Anthony Adifuye has been an integral part of the power block in Lagos and the southwest of Nigeria for the better part of his political career. He is today one of the national leaders of the All Progressive Congress. Welcome, Senator. Good morning. At the same time, we have joining us from Arise Abuja Studio, the presidential candidate of Action Democratic Party, Yabagi Sani, who is a professional engineer in the oil and gas industry, as well as a former member, board of trustees of the All Nigeria People's Party. Gentlemen, you are welcome to the program. Good morning. Thank you for having me. Now, let's start with um, just some sort of clarification, I imagine, at this point. Mr. Sani. Yes, go ahead. You're the presidential party of the, you're the presidential candidate of the Action Group, are you not? Um, Action Democratic Party. Is that correct? Yes. Yes, that's correct. And your campaign is still in full flow in this final week. Very much, very much so, very much right. so. Right, it's important to clarify. We are, we are crisscrossing the entire, yes, we are crisscrossing the entire length and breadth of, the, of Nigeria. We are talking to particularly the youth who I believe have a stake in what is going to happen uh, uh, a week from today, that is a Saturday, the 16th of uh, February 2019. We believe that uh, this election is going to be the watershed in the uh, Nigerian march towards greatness. And uh, we represent that uh, landmark that I believe, or the milestone that will uh, make Nigeria to break away from the past that has not yielded anything which we can be proud of. Uh, we are here to grow this economy because that's the most important thing. Economy has no discrimination whether you are from the south or from the north or from wherever, wherever you are, uh, if the economy is bad, it affects us you know, uh, at the same way. So we are here to ensure that Nigeria economy, which has the promise of greatness, if you look at the natural endowment, you look at the human capital, you look at the mere size of this country, you look at the location of this country on the equator, you look at the fact that Nigeria it plays big in the, in the economic, global economic setting. And for us to have our, our GDP drop to the level it has dropped to, in 2014 it was about uh, almost 600 billion US dollars. Today our GDP has dropped to almost uh, to just about 360 you know, uh, billion dollars, which means that our economy has shrunk. You know, and then to, to have shrunk to that level means that the government is not uh, doing anything or they don't have the knowledge on how to grow the economy, which has, like I said, the promise of greatness. You have a young population that is educated, waiting to be, uh, to be applied. You have an economy that has oil and gas sector. We are number six uh, among the countries that are exporting crude oil and gas. We are, in fact, number three, where you talk about, uh, the, uh, talk about gas. We have a very fabulous uh, opportunity in terms of agriculture, which is the main, which is supposed to be the main uh, engine that grows economy. Look at U.S. Uh, agriculture occupies about 70% of the GDP. Uh, in the, our own case here, we have a source of revenue which we can plow into growing the agriculture sector, growing the educational sector, growing the housing, the health sector, the infrastructure sector. We don't need to be taking jimbo loans from, economy, from uh, countries like China that 22 years ago were also as backward as we are. So what I'm saying is that if, if uh, Indonesia, Malaysia, and uh, Singapore can make it and become and uh, be described today, uh, like North, uh, South Korea to be described today as a developed economy, Nigeria has much, much more than resources that we can become big. So my administration will ensure that we take advantage of what God has given to us. We make hay while the sun shines. Oil will soon be out of favor in terms of source of energy. Now it is, it is, it is important now Every economy needs oil for now. So, and look at what we are doing with our own, uh, with the oil and gas sector. So, my experience in the oil and gas sector will come to be. I, I will apply it and make sure that Nigerians have not business with hunger. 
killing ourselves, I mean, killing each other, and then uh, 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 talking about leaving the country, that is uh, separatism and all this that you have in this country. Simply because the government you have, and the governments you have all, at, all along, do not understand the, the, the issue of how to grow this economy. That is what we are coming to do. And that's why we're asking the youth to vote for ADP, vote for Engineer Wawa Isani, because we are the promise of the future. We know, I am experienced, I know I have the knowledge. I attended Columbia University, which is one of Ivy League universities. I have been working in the oil and gas sector. I know the areas where people are, these people are stealing our money. As we speak today, as I sit here, we have lost billions of dollars. And, and it's, continually, it's continuously going like that. We can't afford to have a promise of greatness over such an economy, and the people will be stealing our money in the manner they are doing it. That is why I step forward. That's why I'm, I'm asking the youth to vote for me on, on, on 16th February as the next president of this country, because we can turn things around. Nigeria is not supposed to be poor at all. If you compare us with other countries, you know that we are great. Given Nigeria an opportunity anywhere in this world, he's either number one or a very good number two. So I can't understand why we cannot assemble these Nigerians and give them the tax. How can we be exporting crude oil and gas in the raw form by today? We are still doing that. Our finances are in comatose. That is not what we are supposed to do. We are supposed to make sure we don't allow people running our oil and gas sector to be burning the candles from the two hands. Now, they export the crude oil, are supposed to refine here, they, they earn commission, they import petroleum products, they earn commission, they, they, they come and do, and, and do run tripping with the cargoes that are bringing petroleum, petroleum products, which they are saying Nigerians are paying subsidy. There is no subsidy, and I'll prove it. In a hundred days, I'll prove to Nigerians that there's nothing like subsidy on oil, oil and gas, which is eating up about one trillion naira of our money, which can be plowed into this economy to grow it in the manner that it should be grown. So what I'm saying is that Nigeria is a great promise. Nigeria cannot make it under this leadership that we have today. We have, look at, I, I mean, President Wari came in, and the three, four years now down the line, and our economy is still good, now diving. That is not the promise of this country. And that is why I am saying that the youth must rise up and then take this destiny into their hands and vote for me on the 16th of February 2019. Because this election must be an election that, that changes everything for Nigeria. And the only way we can change is when we have a government that can govern, not a government that is that, that, that's not governing. And, and I am sure that Nigerians, the youth in particular, are listening to me and they know that this country has the great potential which is, need, which is waiting, waiting to be tapped. And we can do it because we are doing it. Others who are less uh, 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 fortunate like we are, are doing it and becoming great. So what we are saying is that Nigeria must be great. And for it to be great, you have leaders. You need leaders like myself, leaders that are, are, are connected, leaders that are internationally known. I am internationally connected. In, in the oil and gas sector, I have known. You know, I, I have a hard proposal that I've given to the government, which unfortunately, when this government came, in, came on board, they stopped the program, which is checking the abuses, checking the, the theft, the crude oil theft that we... The, do you hear of crude oil theft again? You don't hear about it because those you have in charge are right. also thieves. And they, they, are, they, are, they, are, they are blocking all avenues of, 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 uh, of Nigeria becoming great. I'm, I'm not trying to, to cast a aspersion on anybody, <laughs> but right. I'm telling you the fact as it is. If you check, you'll find right. out that it is true. Thank you, Senator. Thank you, Senator. We're going to come into the studio here in Lagos, and I'm going to ask... Um, I'm sorry, thank you, Engineer. I'm going to ask Senator, um, Senator Adifuye, to respond to some of the criticisms that um, um, Engineer Sonny has raised as about this um, government, about the, uh, you're a member of the incumbency, you are a member, you were at the, the rally yesterday, yesterday, APC had a rally in Lagos, you were there yesterday. How do you respond to the current administration, the criticism that this current administration is getting around the economy? He made some salient points about the fact that the GDP has been stagnated. Obviously, that's because of the recession we had. He has talked about some of the subsidy um, conundrums that we currently have in the country, especially around do we or do we not get rid of subsidy? There has been partial um, 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 subsidies um, reduction, but there hasn't really been a real will to reduce subsidies. When we talk about the current government's achievement, that's why he's, a, he's sitting there running. How do you respond to these criticisms about this current administration and the lack of growth, the lack of prosperity, and the fact that Nigeria is now the poverty capital of the world? Now, let me wish him well. I think uh, he's a very ambitious man. I like people who are very ambitious. 
and um, <clears throat> be, be, I have one joy that tomorrow will be better. I, 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 um, the, the only hope is that tomorrow will be better. I, I look at the young ones that are coming and uh, I'm very happy with uh, what I see because uh, one, most of you are educated, 75% of you are educated. So you understand yourself, you understand the language, you understand the economy. Yeah, but here we are. He has been speaking about the downnosing of the economy because he is an engineer, he's been in oil and gas, he doesn't understand what it is. Uh, if he had been the one who came to power, when Buhari came to power, not only that he would have fainted, he would have still been in coma suit till today because they emptied the old central bank. There was not a single dollar left there. So uh, there is nothing anybody could do. But let's forget about what he's saying. Let's talk about how to make Nigeria better. Now, the economy of Nigeria, he referred to China, he referred to this. If they had been referring to GDP, they would still have been in the same position we are today. What we want now is security for every Nigerian. But these are promises. Once again, you shouldn't be running on promises. You should be running on achievement. Let's talk about Buhari's achievements in these is areas. The achievement I'm coming to, is the achievement I'm coming to, is security. We've, we've tried as much as possible to guarantee security for any average Nigerian. Before we came in, you could be going on the road and you are kidnapped. You all know all those stories. You all know what happened in the northeast and so on and so forth. We fought it to a standstill. We, we are still fighting it, and we shall fight it. But there are also reports of insurgency increasing. There are also there are reports of 7 million people in the north being internally displaced. How are we fighting secure, I mean, Boko Haram, insurgency, and we still have these issues? Now, <clears throat> you, you forget history very easily. During the last administration, we, we, the pastors were caught with dollars trying to go and purchase arms to fight insurgency. Could you have ever defeated insurgency with a pastor proclaiming arms for you? Would you have? Now today we have helicopters, we have bombers, we have everything, and the, and the insurgency are scattered all over the place. They now come occasionally and do uh, bombing and do damages and run away and so on and so forth. Before they were occupying about 13 local governments. Now they are not occupying any local government. So we have done in, we have done very well in, in the in the in the line of uh, security. Now let me come to economy. That's 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 the most important thing. We want to create jobs for everybody. That is the most important thing. And to create jobs, we need electricity. We met about two, three kilo uh, 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 megawatts when we came in. Now we are producing seven megawatts. And we are transmitting about 6.2 megawatts. That is double what they did in 16 years. So we are, we are hoping that by 2020, every house will have light for 24 hours. 24 hours, nothing more. So you can do your own industry in your house. That is what is happening in China. You can, you can see a Chinese, we produce your blouse in the room 10 by 10. And they are comfortable. So we want to generate employment for everybody. Not looking for oil, not looking for gas, not looking. That is, that is, that is not Nigerian economy. Nigerian economy is that every individual should have something to do. And I'm happy that is happening now. You can see our graduates. They are now designers. They are now cake bakers. They are proud to be. Not, 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 these are the duties led for illiterates before. You know, they do everything now with passion. I, I, this, this my dress is, is, is sewn by a graduate and she's a woman. She's a girl, she's a girl of about 22 years. She sewed this dress. When she came to me and said, uh, Daddy, can I be your tailor? I said, you, you are a tailor. I said, yeah, test me. And I tried, I tried, I tried that. This is where I am. Before, you have to wait for weeks for you to get this dress made. 
In 24 hours, she brought back my dress. These are the things we are looking at. We are looking, women, girls are now mechanics, and they are graduates. They know what they are doing. Not, not all these illiterate mechanics. We want to train people with air conditioners, you know, we, 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 we want professionals. And this, 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 this uh, class of, of youth we are producing now are educated. They are graduates, not that you can't, you can't put them aside. So whatever they are doing, that is how to grow the economy. The last time I went to the north, I can see a farm two miles long. And you can see this youth growing, even with bands singing and growing, singing. That is how to de develop uh, the economy. But when you begin to talk of GDP, GDP, how does that affect the average Nigerian? All we want is for average Nigerian to have something doing. To have something doing, that's all. No, not everybody looking for a white collar job. Not everybody wanting to be in an NPC. They are all what? I'm sure uh, it's going to be a friend of Atiku, being in oil and gas. All they are looking for is to grab the NNPC and, as he said, promise to sell it to his friends. No, that's, 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 that's not the issue. Why I, mean, I, I guess you're going into the issue of corruption. Do you want to talk a little bit about your um, administration's achievements on corruption, and um, especially in, now, in, in a rebuttal to what he's accused? If you look at what we have done in corruption, even, even if, 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 if it has never happened before, the chief judge of, of Nigeria, we stopped him because he, he owes more than what we expect him to have. As a declaration. Yeah. He, he didn't declare. Not that he didn't declare. If, if, if I didn't declare my account, and you get there, you find 100 naira there. You know that's why I forgot to declare. But if I didn't declare my account, and you get there and find billions there, then something must be happening. If I didn't declare that I have a house, maybe it's a ramshackle house, then you say, oh, he forgot. But if you now find that it's 55 houses I forgot to declare, then you know something, I'm, I was hiding that. So we have fought corruption almost to a standstill, and we are still going to fight uh, 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 corruption. There is no doubt in it that the, the, this present administration has brought corruption almost to its knees, almost to its knees, whether generals, whether judges, bomb sex, uh, ministers, commissioners, even ordinary when Minister of Finance that did not declare that he didn't do NYC, was sent off. That's yes, but you have the current Minister for Communications, sir, Shitsu. He didn't do NYC and he's a serving minister. Well, I don't know the reason they gave. I don't know the reason they that gave. That he gave. You, you know, if you are 30, you are exempted. I don't know whether he was exempted. No, he wasn't exempted. I, I he said know. he was not called to do the NYC, whereas nobody is called to do the NYC, and he remains a serving minister, even though that's illegal. It's against the laws of Nigeria. Uh, by the time I graduated, there was no NYC, so <laughs> I don't know whether, I don't know when he graduated, so I don't Maybe know. We should go to, but so what I'm saying is that opportunity to go we, to we, have fought, we have fought corruption to stand still, that people are now afraid even to steal or to send uh, money out of Nigeria. The worst is, st st you see, there are two, two crimes, stealing our money and putting it in Nigeria. Then stealing our money and then sending it out of Nigeria. Two crimes, stealing and then exporting our money to another country. So even when we have caught them, we now find it difficult to bring that money back so that you and I can use it. If this money is in our bank, you could, you could ask for it and establish your own studio. I could ask for it and establish my engineering farm and I can pay back as we like. But now we, we, we go back outside and borrow Nigerian money. And they will say it's a single digit interest. The same money that was stolen from here. Uh, the Zian is so $20 billion. The money is still hanging there in, in, uh, in, uh, in Britain. And there are all sorts of 
to send it back to us because they are using that money. Mm. All right. So we're the go Prime to Minister of Britain uh, said Senator. if that money was stolen from Britain, Britain would have collapsed. And Nigeria is still, yeah, we didn't collapse. Right. So you can see how much we have done to ensure that Nigeria keeps going. All right, Senator, we're going to go to Abuja and hear from our guest in the studio. Sunday. Mr. Sani? Yeah. Would you care to um, give us your views yeah, I, on the government's anti-corruption fight, which was a major part of their campaign promise prior to the 2015 election. How successful has it been in your view? Well, I, I think uh, this government should be truthful and then honest you know, with themselves. Because if you are not honest yourself, you find yourself being really portrayed in the light that you will not want to be seen. I think this government, if you must, be, must tell the the truth, that we, they have failed in the fight against corruption. While we fix the um, connection challenges we're having with our, in our budget studio, we're going to come back to you, um, Senator. Um, to you. Senator, can you give us your view of the political campaigns as we've seen the various manifestos, debates, interviews? Which party is coming into the elections with greater momentum, in your view? Now, uh, let, let me tell you my personal view. I, I, I hate rallies. I hate rallies. Uh, when you do rallies, you disturb the populace, you mm -hmm. do a lot of damage, you give miscreants opportunity to strike and so on and so forth. I think a time will come. We will also be able to organize our campaign like they do in the United States, like they do in Britain, elsewhere, in our own way, without causing all this. Uh, since the television is now available, I believe uh, all these rallies should be done in a hall, organized hall where people can ask questions, talk, and so on and so forth, and the public can, can listen, and I think we will get better by, by, by it. But having said that, uh, I think all the parties are really uh, uh, trying, because it's very, very expensive to organize rallies, to get the crowd there, to get them transported to the point of rallies and so on and so forth. And then what I hate about rallies is, is, again, is that the same people you saw today is the same people you see tomorrow, the same people, and it's very expensive uh, organizing a rally. So you see all these uh, small parties, they are unable to meet up with this tempo and so on and so forth. So I will really think, say that it's actually the PDP and the APC that actually uh, working very uh, hard in terms of organizing rallies and so on and so forth. To organize rallies in uh, 36 states is not easy. You know? And then uh, we have to organize a presidential, gubernatorial for all the other candidates and so on and so forth. Very, very ex ex expensive. And uh, personally, I think we should look and create another avenue to be able to get to the populace, to be able to tell them what our manifesto is, to be able to tell them what we want to do. And I'm sure the youth coming behind are going to improve on what we are doing now. Mr. Sani, would you agree with Senator Defouye's view on political rallies? Given the challenges some of the smaller parties have had with campaign finance, including your party, where your governorship candidate in Abia State was specific about the cost of mobilizing people, paying transport, it's campaign Campaigns are ruinously expensive. Would you agree with that, that rally should be scrapped? Well, I think to an extent I will, because the taxpayers' money is being used in a manner that you think these people have no uh, 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 fear of God. Look at the kind of uh, 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 campaign that uh, APC in particular has uh, embarked upon, using our money, taxpayers' money. You go to Abu any, everywhere you go to Abuja now is one is uh, uh, the, uh, the President Buhari's picture and Oshumbajo, and then they park people all over the place. It's our money that is being used. So that's why other parties like ourselves, we don't have access to people's money, and even when we have access, we will not do what they are doing. Because if you have fear of God, you will not be spending this to print your I mean, this amount of money, when people are going to bed, you know, angry, when people cannot know when the next meal is coming from, and you are spending so much money, our money, on, on, on telling us lies. For corruption, for instance, if you look at it, 
Look at Zamfara was not as bad as it was, you know, as it is today. When, uh, when, uh, the, uh, the, before this administration, you know, came to be, uh, uh, the, 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 the Boko Haram we are talking about was a localized thing to a very large extent, you know. But today, you can't travel from one point of, uh, 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 to another in Nigeria without the fear of being kidnapped. Kidnapping is more than, you know, it's more prevalent than it used to be. So for my uh, uh, brother there to say that uh, they fought uh, corruption, I, I mean insurgency to his, to his uh, knees, no, that is not true. We have to be truthful so that we can uh, begin to address the problems. You know, we know that a governor from, uh, from Zambara, uh, the state controlled by APC, said that he wants the state of emergency to be declared. That never happened when uh, the, the former administration was there. So, and then talk about the economy, like I said, this government has failed. We didn't have a recession. They put off, they, they, they throw us into, into this recession. And the Central Bank has been warning that the, real, the way this government is going would again be in recession. And then look at the kind of money they are using in, on elections. Well, how, can we, how can we not get, how can we not be able to, uh, to, to find, I mean, grow this economy? So the point I'm making is that you look at all the three points that brought this government, you look at the economy, insurgency, insecurity, all these things are still there. In fact, they are more endemic than they used to be. We all know this. So for once, can this government be truthful so that the Nigerians will take them for who they are? And I know that the person of, Mr. Uh, of uh, President Buhari is being used by, by some uh, crooks around him. And, and this is the truth. So uh, unfortunately, uh, President Buhari himself, today, because of probably the, the kind of treatment he has gone through, is not completely in charge of the situation. The wife came out to tell us that they are no longer in charge. Nigeria should please come and rescue this country from the hands of Kabaz. So how can you now come and tell us that? And then they're still, they're still pushing this old man all over the place. He's falling. He's not even remembering some of the things. And they still believe that that is what is good for Nigeria. They must suck, I mean, they must check their conscience. If they had the fear of God, they would have asked this, this uh, uh, President Buhari to please you know, rest and let a young man come to run this, this, uh, this, this, this government. So the point I'm making is that the APC you have is not, they, they are not in love with this country. They are not proud of this country. They still, in the manner that you never thought, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a they are Nigerians. You know, they are like army of occupation. Only... They, they, they are so desperate. Look at what they are doing. They refuse to sign the electoral law. They, I'm sure President Buhari, I know, would have signed that electoral law, you know, long time ago. They didn't allow him to sign it. They went after the, the Chief Justice of the Nation to, um, I mean, a few weeks to the election. President Buhari, I know, would never do that. So this is what is happening. Believe you me, if people believe in President Buhari, it is not President Buhari that is ruling today. It is the cabal. You don't need anybody to tell you that this is, Nigeria is not longer in the hands of people you elect. We are again going to confirm these cabals to continue for another four years to be irresponsible because you give power to somebody who's not elected, he's irresponsible. They are using it in such a manner to, 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 to enrich themselves and then to, to throw this country into, the, into, into anarchy. I, we are calling Nigerians to come to please wake up and then know that there's a disaster waiting to happen. Other, other companies, I mean, even organizations who are doing business in this, in this country have, have left. Because they see this economy as a, an accident waiting to happen. It's going to crumble, believe you me. If we allow irresponsible people that are not elected to run our economy, we are calling for anarchy. And that's why people like us have come forward to say, please hold hope is not lost. It is not about Atiku or, or Buhari who have run this country for almost 20 years without anything to, to, uh, for us to, to be proud of. And they still want to continue. We are not robots, for God's sake. We are human beings. Nigerians are highly, highly, highly informed individuals. They cannot hijack the process and then continue to load it over us and think that we are stupid. We are not stupid. February 16, I am sure, is going to make a, a very fundamental change in, 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 in the way this country is run. Because time has come for Nigerians to wake up like other countries have done it. They are not more informed than us. They are human beings like us. In fact, Nigerians are even, in some, most cases, we are better than some of these people that have done it, have voted out uh, 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 the people that are, have, have not given them anything to, 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 con to, to, conf to, I mean, to give them confidence that they can, they can run, you know, their affairs. So Nigeria is even in a worse state than it used to be four years ago. So I think we can see these things. These are not, these are empirical things that you can look you can look at. They are not you know uh, uh, the same thing that you imagine or you you use quoted tongues to talk about. The reality in this country today is that we are in danger and we have a chance. 
February 16 is a chance for Nigeria to break away from this past that has not yielded anything. That will, in fact, if care is not taken, throw us into, into, into more problems. And who knows, you know, if you may have Nigeria after this election. Because if we don't do the right thing, if we don't stop the mistake, the mistake will stop us. We don't want this mistake that we have made by electing President Buhari, you know, in, in 2015 to stop Nigeria. Nigeria must not be stopped. And to, not to stop Nigeria is to stop this APC and even PDP. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Engineer. Um, I want to just shift gears a little bit to talk about actually what to expect next week, um, the next, um, on next Saturday. Do we believe that Nigeria is ready from a security perspective, from an organization pers organizational perspective for the elections um, next sat on Saturday? Yesterday, there was a report that um, security, there are 20,000 security officers that have been now pulled back from private assignments that are now going to go back into the system to be part of the security system on the ground um, next Saturday. How prepared do you think we are for the upcoming um, elections? Well, let me, let me respond to some of these uh, allegations made by uh, Sony. Uh, I think it's a pity that um, uh, we have not, EF, EFCC has not done enough, really, in fighting corruption. Because if not, I think Sony will have been one of those uh, that will have been looked at properly to find out where a single man he is the candidate, he is also the party, and how he's funding it. So I think the FCC should find out. Because he's so, he's so hungry about uh, uh, Nigerians being in danger. Of course, it's only those who are corrupt who can say Nigeria is in danger. The way we are now, I think Nigeria is, uh, is getting better. We will find that. Uh, the VP, even the vice president, goes to the market, walking with the people and so on and so forth, shows you Nigeria is free. I was with him two days ago. We were walking through Bariga. And Shomulu uh, shaking hands with market women and asking how they feel about our party and so on and so forth. And I think uh, we, have, we have done very well in, in trying to make sure that life is more meaningful to Nigeria than ever before. What do you expect from us, Sonny? We inherited 16-year corrupt police, 16-year corrupt army, 16-year corrupt civil service. Can we clear that in four years? No. I think uh, you don't know what you are aiming to get. To be the president of Nigeria is not as simple as, and easy as you are, as you are saying. I, so now let, let's come down to preparation of INEC. INEC said they are prepared, and I believe that they are prepared. And I'm sure <coughs> more Nigerians are now more interested in voting and electing somebody they believe can run uh, uh, Nigeria and make it better. Uh, quite a lot of uh, the way Nigeria is structured now is only two parties that are actually contesting on Saturday, even though we have about 61 of them on the ballot paper. But actually, the fight is between PDP and the APC. I'm now, I'm now not just speaking as an APC man. I'm also speaking as an elder statesman to tell you what can happen in Nigeria and so on so forth. Now, <coughs> now <coughs> he's talking about cabal. What is cabal? Quite a lot of people don't know what is cabal. Quite a lot of people don't know uh, uh, Muhammadu uh, uh, Buhari. He doesn't tolerate such things. Wari doesn't tell research things. Wari was in, he has been there for four years. I don't think I've seen him more than once. And probably all the, after that, I've seen him at rally. He hasn't got time for a couple of hours. such a busy, dedicated man. But what about the fact that it's his wife who raised the issue of the cabal? That's a family matter. I don't want to discuss it. When, you, when you see Wari, you can ask, can ask him that question. But however, the, you know, the journalists have a way of saying, of, of changing what you didn't say to what you said. So I don't, I don't know whether I said so or so. I, I know the man was away for about uh, some months. He was sick. When he saw that the place was empty, I think he just fainted. And now he has recovered and he's clearing the mess that they have left behind. Now, I think people are ready now to go out on Saturday and vote. 
come sun, rain, sunshine. I think people should just go out and vote for, for, for the party of their choice. My, the party of my choice is APC, so if you want to vote for us, uh, I think you should go and vote for us. And the party that can do it from all these parties I see now is APC. That's the only one party now that can do it. I, I'm not saying we are angels. I'm not saying we are there already. But definitely we, we have ambition to make Nigeria better. We don't, we are, our, <clears throat> we are not swearing that when we get there we shall sell an NPC to our friends. We are not swearing that when we get there we shall sell electricity to our friends and so on and so forth. No. Uh, I think we are going to go slow and steady and make sure that we get the Nigeria back to Nigerians. Nigerians will now control their own destiny. We are going to make sure that you, everybody has a job to do. We are going to make sure that there are roads. We are going to make sure that railways are working. We are going to make sure that you have light for 24 hours in your, in your house. We are going to make sure that the schools are functioning. We are going to make sure that your children are developed and ready for tomorrow. Just as we are doing now, we have signed the not too young, not, not too young to rule. Because we know that very, very soon, a Nigerian president will be under 50 years old. Very, very soon. We, we are all getting old, but we've developed all of you. We are, well, that, is, that is my pride, that we've developed all of you. We have more university than the United States put together. We have more university than Great Britain put together. So what are we looking for? Stop the universities. Get the people working, and that's what we want to do. We want everybody working. All this, this agriculture we want to develop. We want. If you look at it now, uh, <clears throat> during the campaign, you will see uh, bags of rice, bags of gari, and they are all locally processed, produced, and packaged. Not like coming from China, as we used to have before. Not like coming from Indonesia, no. packaged by young girls who are now working in the farms. So you put a strong emphasis on vocational skills. Yeah. But before we talk about that and in the sort of um, job creation, the economic perspective, I want to take you back to your earlier point about how corrupt people enrich themselves and take the money abroad. You referred just now to part of um, PDP's manifesto, Atiku Abubakar's manifesto, privatization of NNPC, quite negatively. But what, what's your view of his idea of the war against corruption? His take on it was to create an amnesty where the money, capital flight, as it were, mm -hmm. is repatriated, rather than a more punitive stance that this current government administration is taking. For him, that would be more effective, to just get the money back the way the Turkish are doing. What's your view on that, sir? <clears throat> I think he, he's, he's just playing, he's playing pranks. Now, now <clears throat> you have what you call bargaining. If, if you steal uh, Nigerian money, if you are ready to return the money without going to court, they bargain with you. And I think if, if for instance, uh, you stole $20 billion, if you want to return, return that money to Nigeria. Nigeria will pay 50% of that money as legal fees, because it's, it's considered as bad debt. So usually EFCC sit down with you, say, look, if you can agree to return this money, uh, this is the way we go about it. We give you light sentence, we, 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 we retain some of the money for you. And you know some of these banks that went bankrupt. That was the only way they could take the money back to Nigeria. They, they call it bargaining and not amnesty. Let him give himself amnesty first. That's the only thing he could do. When he gets there, he first of all say, I give myself amnesty, I'm no more in the corrupt uh, district. And then all the others come and begin, bring your money so I give you amnesty. No, corruption is not for sale. We, we, that is happening now. They, it is not everyone. It is when you now fail to return the money that it goes public and then they begin to, 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 to get lawyers and so on. It's very expensive to 
to recover uh, foreign loots. Very, very expensive indeed. You lose almost 50% of that money if you don't bargain with, with that person. But if the person can sign and bring the loot back, it's the easiest thing to do. And that's why you see, we find some of them, and you say, ah, this man, if he, he, he was supposed to be in jail, he's now free. It's because of, of all this AFCC uh, bargaining that they do with them. So it's not everybody that we just say no, but some of them are so, they think they're clever. Uh, I haven't stolen the money, you know. It, there is nothing hidden outside the world. If you go into the internet and type my name, and then you go, you have a code. You can go and see all the accounts I have all over the world. It will show it to you. All the lands I have all over the world, it will show it to you. So, so <clears throat> nothing is hidden uh, anymore. So we do bargaining now. The EFCC does bargaining now. And if you can, if you can return the loot, they, they give you light sentence and probably they give you back part of, part of the money because they will have spent all that, more than that money, either for the lawyer and so on and so forth. And when you have foreign loot, it involves two sets of lawyers. Those you are going to engage in that country and your own that are going to be here, and you are the one that are going to pay for the two. And the, the one there is 50%, because it's considered as a bad, as a bad uh, uh, debt that they want to recover for you. So we, we, are, we are doing bargaining uh, already. And I'm sure, uh, if Atiku himself is not, I'm, I'm sure, I'm not sure he has not been bargaining. <laughs> I'm not sure he's not been bargaining. I'm not sure, I don't have the facts here. So I think it's the FCC who can say those who have bargained. Were... It's time now for a short break.